Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Elden Ring. And today I want to showcase an awesome weapon, another katana. You guys know I love my katanas. And this one is the Dragon Scale Blade. Now some of you guys may remember this from the Closed Network test. Unfortunately, this one has changed since then. In the Closed Network test, this actually scaled with Faith, which would have been really cool because of course then we would have had an Arcane Katana, an Intellect Katana, and then a Faith one. However, this one instead scales with Dex and Strength, but it is still a very cool weapon. Described as a weapon made by sharpening a gravel stone scale thought to be the source of ancient dragon immortality into an unclouded blade. However, alas, the Dragonkin soldiers never attained immortality and perished as decrepit pale imitations of their skyborn kin, which doesn't sound that exciting. However, the skill on this one, Ice Lightning Sword, will see you call down a bolt of ice lightning into the blade and bring it down upon a foe, which in and of itself does great damage, but then this imbues the blade for a short period of time and you are then able to do lightning and ice damage, therefore allowing you to inflict frostbite, which is incredibly potent in this game. So in this video, I want to go over a little bit more about the weapon. I want to show you where you can get it. I also then want to speak about how you might want to build around this and actually turn this into a build because there's some fun permutations you can have not only with frostbite, but a few other interesting interactions. So if you guys are interested in any of that, make sure you drop a like in this video. Make sure you let me know in the comments down below if you guys have tested this out, if you're interested in getting it. And of course, don't forget to keep it locked if you have been enjoying the Elden Ring content. Now, to begin with, again, quick summary on the weapon. This has a dex requirement of 20, a strength requirement of 12, so it is a dex strength weapon. It scales primarily with dex and, of course, secondarily with strength. And again, this can dish out ice and lightning damage. The unique skill itself, it looks really cool. Like, it's a very visually appealing skill. I love seeing this in action. I will say it does have a little bit of a slow wind-up, and you definitely do not have any sort of invulnerability, any super armor during this, so it is very easy to get knocked out of this animation. It's worth noting if you get knocked out of the animation, you'll invariably still have the buff and the imbuing on your sword, so you can still lean into the lightning ice damage, but you of course don't get the powerful strike that comes from completing the unique skill. So that of course means you do need to plan carefully. This isn't one of those ones where you can simply run up to an enemy and just hold down left trigger and hope for the best. This is definitely one of those ones whereby if you do not have a window, you should not be using that skill. Anyway, that being said, when you do pull it off, it is of course very nice, depending on the enemies you're fighting, sometimes that attack alone is enough to inflict frostbite, sometimes you will then need to do a few follow-up swipes, but you can very quickly inflict that. And frostbite, as a quick recap, is of course a status effect that builds up in a very similar manner to bleed, and then when it procs, of course, you do see a huge chunk of the enemy's health disappear. But of course, where it differs from bleed is that following that, when frostbite is applied, the enemy's damage absorption is then lowered by 20%, and their stamina recovery is also lowered, so basically it is a nice debuff so you can deal some more damage. So, first things first, if you want to get this weapon, then you want to turn your attention to the Lake of Rot. If you've not got to this location, then you will need to go and complete or work your way through Rani's questline. If you haven't done that, I will link the video to the Moonlight Greatsword in the description box down below. That gives you all the steps to get here. But once you get to the Lake of Rot, what you then need to do is basically run to this location here. You need to run through the lake itself, which of course is uh, not exactly the most convenient. It will involve dealing with some Scarlet Rot. You can either just brute force it if you have enough health and potions. You can use some preserve emboluses if you want to. Either way, it's going to hurt. It's not going to be an enjoyable experience, but you need to run down the lake and you will then find a boss that is just sort of lying there. That is the Dragonkin Soldier, and you need to kill that boss, and upon doing so, it will then drop the sword. I actually only learned after the fact, after the defeat of the boss, there is a platform over there where you can press a button and it raises some platforms around the lake, giving you some places to stand. So uh, maybe consider doing that. But anyway, go to the Lake of Rot, defeat this guy, and then once you've done that, you will have the sword. However, if you then want to build around this weapon, there's a few things that I would highly recommend. First things first, another really interesting interaction. Frostbite, as we discussed just a moment ago, of course, once it's applied, it does have that debuff status, allowing you to do more damage. But do keep in mind where it differs from bleed is that once Frostbite is applied, because of course it remains active for a while, you're not going to get that second big tick of damage when it procs. One thing you can do with Frostbite, however, is if you have a quick offhand weapon, like a dagger, that is of course a fire type weapon, then by simply inflicting fire damage to the enemy with Frostbite, it resets Frostbite. It basically removes it, therefore allowing you to apply it again. So depending on, of course, you know, whether you want the uh, slightly longer term buff to just deal damage and chip away over time, or whether you want that big tick, this is one fun thing you can do. I actually put the Flame of the Red Mains and specifically chose the Fire Affinity on the Wakizashi, which is a really, really nice dagger, with the added bonus that it also has bleed. So admittedly, you're not going to bleed that frequently because it's only got 38 blood loss build up, but this build does, technically speaking, have the ability to deal frostbite 
bleed, lightning damage, and fire. And don't forget, Flame of the Red Mains is also a fantastic skill. In light of Horfrost Reach being nerfed, this is now your sort of go-to alternative. It has fantastic posture damage and it will just bring things to their knees. So if you do want to use this one, again, I'll link my video in the description box down below where I showed you guys how to get that. But by having this in your offhand, what you can actually do is you can go and you can use the main weapon. You can use the Dragon Scale Blade to inflict Frostbite, get that nice big chunk of damage. You can then switch the dagger and you can then quickly reset the Frostbite. You can also use Flame of the Red Mains to bring the enemies down to their knees, break their posture, break their poise, so they then are in a very vulnerable state. You can then switch back to your katana and it then gives you a nice opening, given that of course this move has quite a large wind up, to then go and inflict Frostbite again. I'll show you guys where to get the Wakizashi at the end of this video, but of course you don't necessarily have to use that, you could just use a regular dagger, because really all we need is a quick offhand to just slice the enemy, do the fire damage, but I do of course like the fact that this does have some bleed, so it is one of my favourite daggers. In addition to this, I do also have the Dragon Communion Seal, simply because I can then use Flame Grant Me Strength for an additional boost to primarily my physical attack. Yes, of course, the fire will benefit Flame of the Red Mains if I want to. Largely speaking, this is for the physical attack boost, but this does just mean that with the Dragon Seal, I can then cast a quick buff. I only chose the Dragon Seal because, of course, I can use that simply with my current stats. I have 15 Faith, so I can just about make this work. As for the armor pieces, unfortunately there aren't any armor pieces or talisman that specifically lean into Frostbite. There's plenty of things for other affinities, other debuffs, other sort of statuses. Unfortunately not for Frostbite, so what I've done this time around is I've got the Ash of War Scarab Helmet, which actually reduces the FP cost of skills. My current build does not have a great deal of mind, so this basically just makes it so that the skill costs a little bit less. I then also have the Lightning Scorpion Charm, which raises lightning attack power, and that does of course synergize nicely with this blade. We also have the Carrion Filigreed Crest, which lowers the FP consumption cost of skills. So again, nice sort of stack with that helmet to make it a little bit more affordable to use this and spam this move. I'll go through where to get these Talisman in just a minute. You then have the Godfrey Icon, which of course also raises the charge attack power of sorceries, incantations, and skills. This also works with the unique weapon skill. And then for the final one, I again have Marika Source Seal. This is like your free slot. I have this because this gives me the 15 faith that I need. Without that, I of course can't use it. Technically speaking, you could, if you want to, throw on the Lord of Blood's Exaltation if you think that you're going to be using the dagger enough to get a bleed proc, because then you do get a nice damage boost on top. That is, again, an option. But if we go and do a quick little combat test, just running into the uh, subterranean shining grounds, these guys, I just like them because, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're they're pretty beefy and they, of course, have a decent uh, decent health pool for us to sort of test a few things out. So you can see that very, very quickly, we can, of course, build up that frostbite. I can then switch to my dagger to basically inflict that fire, resetting that, and then it basically allows me to go through and dish out frostbite again for, of course, that next big chunk of damage. Now, of course, yes, I could have just maintained that debuff and used that to deal more damage, but it is actually quite a fun way to play, sort of just inflicting frostbite, resetting it, going to do it again. Yes, of course, you do need to make sure you have that window, but again, that's where Flame of the Red Mains comes in really nicely because it does down the enemy, therefore allowing you to follow up with that uh, slower, unique weapon skill. So if you guys like the sound of that, then a few quick things on where to find weapons and talisman. First things first, the Wakizashi Blade. You want to go over to Kaelid and you then want to go to this location you see on the map right now. When you head over there, you will need two Stone Sword keys in order to enter this location, but you will then be in the Gaul Cave. Now from here, you want to simply follow the route that I have on screen right now because you will need to go through and pull a lever in order to open the prison cells. And in doing so, that will allow us to go in and get the dagger. From here, once you now pull the lever, you simply need to drop off the ledge. You then want to turn right. You can ignore all the enemies coming out of the doors. You want to go through this little passageway here, drop off the ledge, go and of course mine out for the enemies. And then this first prison cell on the left, you'll go in, there'll be three collectibles. The first one on the right is the Wakizashi Dagger. As for the Carrion Filigreed Crest, once you have, of course, done the uh, blade portion of Rani's questline, I can't remember the exact part you need to have completed because, of course, I have just completed the whole thing by now. But once you've done that, you can then go over to the Road to the Manor Site of Grace and you can simply speak to War Counselor E.G. and he will sell you the Carrion Filigreed Crest for 5,000 runes. 
As for the Godfrey icon, this one you simply need to go and do one of those Evergals. You want to go through this location you see over on the Alice's Plateau. So pick your nearest site of grace and simply run down to that location. Again, you will need another Stone Sword key, just one this time, but that will of course activate the Evergal. And then go in and defeat the boss and you will then get this talisman. And then finally, if you want the Scarab Helmet, then what you want to do is go over to the Limgrave Tower Bridge site of grace. This is the one, of course, when you run towards the tower. And you then want to run to the very end of the bridge, but instead of taking the portal like you would have done previously, you instead want to work your way off the edge, down the stairs, and then when you drop down to the very bottom, you will then find this helmet. As for the Lightning Scorpion, unfortunately I didn't record my footage when I got this one, but you can get this by going to the Wyndham Catacombs, and then there is a room in there with an imp statue that is sealed by a stone sword key. If you go in there, you'll be able to get this talisman. Now it is also worth noting that another thing you probably should consider using is the Shard of Alexander. This is a talisman that greatly boosts the attack power of skills. Unfortunately, this quest appears to have either bugged for me or just simply doesn't exist. I spoke to Alexander at a few different locations, the sort of big pot guy. However, following that, he is not where he is supposed to be in my game. I definitely didn't kill him. I'm not entirely sure why he is not showing up, but either way, I currently cannot complete this quest line until I go into New Game Plus, so I can't use that in this build. However, I would highly recommend considering using this one because of course it will increase the attack power of your skills. But altogether, that is a little sort of combination of a few things you might want to combine to basically make a build out of this katana. I think it is incredibly cool. Yes, it would have been nice for it to be faith scaled, but alas, it is still a fun weapon to mess around with. And the whole sort of dive in between frostbite and then the sort of flames is actually just a really fun way to play. I've been really enjoying it. So hopefully you guys do too. Anyway, that's it for the time being. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any more questions. Be sure to check out this video if you've missed our recent upload. And of course, don't forget to keep it locked on the channel for plenty more Elden Ring.